We're underway here in game two of our doubleheader. Max Odom leading off. First pitch was fouled away. Second pitch is a ball, and it's one and one on Odom. One and two, excuse me. Thank you, Tom. Hilbert won game one, 13 to nothing. J.R. Hesford are on the mound for the Hawks. Pitch is high and tight to even the count at two and two. And Tom, you're very familiar with <laughs> J.R. Hesford, aren't you? I am. He's known as Haas is what he's known as. And he has been for years my go-to pitcher. And I'll tell you, I'd never be afraid to put him out on the mound. Chop foul down the third baseline, and the count holds at two and two. Well, Hilbert won game one, 13 to nothing. They had an eight-run first inning. A lot of walks. A little bit of a different lineup here. Gif Griff McAndrews is catching this game. Hasford winds it up and fires. Foul down the third baseline and out of play. Good job by Odom to get around on that one and actually get a piece of it. Now this game is a scheduled nine inning game. First game was a scheduled seven inning game. And here's the pitch to Odom. Up high, ball three. Hesford has, like, he has a little bit of a delay there. Goes into the windup, kind of, it's almost like he gets his foot planted and then throws, but he, he's got a, I call it a delay. We'll see it right there. <laughs> Ooh, high and tight, he walked him. Ball four. Never the way you want to start the game. And now Hilbert will look for the double play as twin but brother Zach Odom steps to the plate. But if you think about it, it's just about how every pitcher has started today, yeah. if you think about it. And that may, may be a testament to not used to the mound, right? Yeah. That nobody's played on this field before, so you're getting used to the elements out there. Right. We'll set the Hilbert defense for you momentarily. Hasferter checks on the runner. Throws to the plate, bunted in the air, caught by Hosford, a throw to first in time for the double play. How about that? Tried to bunt it, Zach Odom got it up in the air. Hosford caught it, fired over to first for the double play. So two outs and nobody on. And you know, I gotta be honest with you, I like the thought process there by Wells. They're trying to get that first run on the board to try to get a different mentality this game than they had last game to start things off. Shortstop Jacoby James is the batter now. And here's the pitch to James. High and tight, ball one. Billy LaBello in left, Nolan Evans in center, Dustin Hendricks in right, Alex Ellison at third, Iro Santos at short, John Riviere Vejas at second, Patrick Whalen at first, Griff McAndrews behind the plate, and J.R. Hasperter fires a strike in there. The umpires the same, except now Demetrius Rhodes is behind the plate, and Jimmy Salamone is on the bases. And you're all set. Top of the first, two down, nobody on. The wind up by Hasferter on the pitch. Ooh, high and tight, backs him off the plate. Two and one on the batter. Jacoby James. Hasferter winds it up and fires. Swing and a miss, strike two, two and two. And, and no, this is not something you, you didn't plan on. We are 45 minutes early <laughs> on this one versus what was the scheduled time. And they said because we're going to go a half hour from the end of the last game. Here's the 2-2 two -two pitch. Just missed inside, and the count is full. You're a coach right now, and you're looking at that. And I'm going as, boy, if I'm missing by that much, we're in good shape, right? You've got a good command of the zone, and that's what you're looking for right now from your starting pitcher. Here's the pitch. Inside, ball four. That is the second walk of the inning. And now it's the DH, Aaron Izcayerdo. You know, I, 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 I will say this, and it's something I've brought up on the high school broadcast that we do is, the zone right now for the major leagues, you see that box they put out right there. It's a large zone. And we've got to start seeing, to me, that zone start coming down to the lower levels the same way it is up in the major leagues. The pitch, breaking ball and a beauty for a strike, nothing in one. 
I couldn't agree with you more. Well, I mean, it should be uniform at all levels, shouldn't it's it? It's just not. And, it, and, 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 and in other words, there'll never be, too. Right. Different accountability, right? Different things you're looking at, different things you're told to. There's so many different things that come into play. Throw over to first, and Jacoby James gets back with the dive. And don't forget it, it's each individual umpire is going to be Absolutely. just a little bit different. But you'd like to see it be as close to uniform as possible, at least I would. Asperger fires in there for a strike. See, now to me, that wasn't much different than what we <laughs> saw for that ball four pitch right there. I was thinking the exact same thing. <laughs> That's where I'm talking about, like I said, is that, that, that higher pitch, too, is where we're seeing across the letters about getting it called or not. The pitch, high pop-up, shallow right field. Right fielder coming in. And the right fielder, Dustin Hendricks, makes the catch. He called off the second baseman, and the inning is over. A big double play helps out. No runs, no hits, a w two walks, one man left on base for one half inning of play. It is Wells nothing, Hilbert coming to bat. Yes, sir, go ahead. We're about a half hour ahead of schedule right now <laughs> after that first inning that we had. <laughs> well, well let, let, let's see if we can keep it that way. All right, we want to remind everybody, Hilbert College Baseball is being brought to you by the Big Tree Inn, and you are watching Hilbert College Baseball on Buffalo Sports Page. Celebrating 50 years of business in Niagara County, Comfort Plastics manufactures a wide variety of consumer goods. You can buy our popular patio furniture at leisureaccents.com, our classic snow sleds at theretroracer.com, and know that all of our products are proudly made in the USA, and your purchase supports 150 hardworking families right here in Western New York. Comfort Plastics, a believer in the American dream, Learn more at ConfortPlastics.com or like us on Facebook. Bottom half of the first inning, top of the order for Hilbert, John Riviera, Vejas, Patrick Whalen, and Jeff Duffick scheduled to face right-hander Mason Smith. Riviera Vejas standing in, second baseman. The pitch in there for a strike, nothing and one. Mason Smith working out of the stretch as the, with no one on base here as the inning starts. Game two of our doubleheader. Here's the pitch. Foul back onto the screen. Hilbert won the first, the opener, 13 to nothing. That was a scheduled seven inning game. This one is a scheduled nine inning game. To be honest, I think both teams were glad that that game was only seven <laughs> innings. <laughs> so were we. <laughs> pitch is down low for a ball from Mason. We haven't seen any left handed pitchers yet today, have we? No. But we, we say that in chess. We say that not only because it's, nobody likes to be in a game like that. Right, you're right. Rip foul down the first baseline. Gorgeous day for a doubleheader baseball here at Gowanda. Great opportunity for both these teams to get in, to play in some really good weather. There's a base hit in the left field. And Riviere Vejas gets the Hilbert offense started with a solid single to left. Bring up Patrick Whalen, big left-handed batter. Playing first base. 
for Western New York at this time of year. This is beautiful weather. We find out just how nice it is the rest of this week, apparently. Throw over to first, and Riviera Vejas is back with a dive, being held on by the first baseman, Zach Young. Now he's going to rework that lead a little bit as Mason Smith checks over there. The pitch. Whalen takes a strike on the outside corner at the knees. Nothing in one. Stu Boyer and Tom Prince. Tom doing multiple jobs today. And Russ Battaglia, that's the one thing you're not doing, Tom, is being a photographer, too. Well, I'm running the camera. <laughs> well, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> Another throw over to first. You're doing everything today. You're amazing. I take my cap off to you again. And again, and again. And there's a pitch high and outside. The, all the amazing things that you people on the outside have no idea how versatile Tom is and how good he is at all these things that he does. We wouldn't see these games if it weren't for Tom. Oh, thank you. I appreciate the kind words, too. I really do. And I mean it. Throw over to first. He's back safely. Mason Smith on the mound for Wells. We'll set their defense, too, when we get an opportunity. Riviera Vejas getting a good lead off of first. Another throw over there. He's back safely with the dive. Chris McLean in left. Zach Odom in center. A.J. Campy in right. Lance Phillips at third. Jacoby James at short. Max Odom at second. And Zach Young at first. Bradley Mills behind the plate. And here's Mason Smith on the mound. There go. No, he tried. There's a strike to Whalen as the base runner. Riviere, Riviere Vejas kind of fooled me a little bit there because he looked like he was going to take off. I'll tell you, you can't see all of it, but, boy, that right center gap is a big gap for Whalen to be able to put one in right now. Another throw over to first. He's back safely again. You're right. Look how close the right fielder Campy is to the right yeah. field line. He's playing the line, and you don't have that adjustment. You just you have them, uh, the center fielder just playing on the right side of second base. And there goes the runner. The throw down to second is not in time. Stolen base. I believe that was a ball to Whalen. That's what I had it as. And I was checking out the outfielders, and if you take a look at the left fielder, he's way off the line, way toward Well, that I get. Yeah, you I know get what I mean? Too. Especially if they know and they think he's a pull hitter. Like, I can understand that one. Shortstop, James sneaking in behind the runner. Here's the pitch. Low and outside for a ball. Oh, Hilbert would love to start this game kind of the way they started the first game. A big eight-run first inning. That, that's very helpful. They'd be delighted to score first and here in the first inning again. Throw. Oh, nobody. The pitcher, Smith, spun around, and there was nobody covering the bag, so he held on to the ball smartly. Kobe James, look, he sometimes is trying to sneak in behind him. Pitch to the plate. And it hits the bat. Caught as a foul tip and a called strike three. One away. And that'll bring up Jack Duffick, the DH today in the second game. Runner on second, one away. Bottom of the first and scoreless. Game two of our doubleheader today. You could say him and Whalen were the two big, big guys in the, in the first game. But just because they got on base, yeah. right? It really was. That's what they were doing. And Duffick also had a big hit. There's a line drive into center field for a base hit. And it'll be first and third with one away. Second hit of the inning. Bring up Jairo Santos, the shortstop. He had, I think he had three hits in that first game. His bat was on fire. Santos, right-handed batter. Mason Smith will try to work his way out of a jam here. Hilbert turned a double play on the top of the first, and that's what Wells would like to do here. Pitch is high and tight for a ball, 1-0. Little bit of a breeze blowing here at Gowanda. The pitch. That's on the outside corner for a strike. Count evens at 1-1. One
Tell you, definitely the pitching staffs, have, uh, you can see, all want to hit that outside corner. You can see that's where they're living today. And it's been about every single pitcher that's come to the mound, their goal has been to hit that outside corner. Mason Smith checks the runners and pitches. Backs him off the plate for a ball. A little more moans and groans this game than we heard the first one when, <laughs> as far as the pitches go. So it was a very rocky start for Wells. Here's the pitch down low for a ball. Jairo Santos in a good spot as a hitter. Counts very much in his favor. The pitch. On the outside corner for a strike, strike two. One away, runners at the corner, scoreless, bottom of the first. Gilbert with two hits in the inning. Here's the pitch to Santos. Foul out of play off to the right. Tom, you're not going to believe what I just found. The pitch, lined into right center field. The center fielder is there and makes the catch. Here comes the runner from third. There will be no throw. Santos gets a sacrifice fly. Odom make the catch, but Santos gets the RBI. One to nothing, Hilbert. So two away, runner on at first, and here's Nolan Evans, the center fielder. The pitch on the outside corner for a strike, nothing in one. Jack Duffett still on at first base. The pitch chopped down the third baseline, gloved by the third baseman, a long throw to first, gets past everybody. And we'll have runners at first and third. So, Lance Phillips picked the ball up, but his throw to first put the first baseman, Zach Young, in a position where he couldn't do anything with the ball. So I'm going to say there's an error on the throw. Yeah, I, I marked it as an error. So it's E5, and there are runners at first and third. Duffick goes to third on the error, and Evans is on at first, and here's right fielder Dustin Hendricks. Two outs, runners at first and third, one to nothing, Hilbert in the bottom of the first. He squares around a bunt, throw over to first. Evans is back safely with the dive. They had Hendricks square around a bunt. I would assume he's just showing bunt there, but who knows. And another throw to first. He's back safely with another dive. So, Sue, sometimes what a batter is doing there is they're looking to see what the pitcher's going to do, right? Are they going to throw over? They're looking for moves, especially from the pitcher, especially if you're trying to see if that runner wants to take off. The pitch is down low. Throw down to second. The tag. And here comes the runner from third. He's safe at second, and now the runner from third comes flying home and it's 2-0. Very alert base running by Jack Duffick as Evans gets a stolen base. And we, I, we might have a discussion on that one as the Wells head coach is out. Steve, I, I think Steve. he waited. He was looking to see yeah. if he held the ball and obviously the ball came out of his glove. That's why you saw him reach for it behind the bag. And that was the reason for the safe call right there. You saw he did not make the call. He was ready to call him out, but looked for the ball to be caught. And once the ball hit the ground, that's when the save call came into play. I was also surprised that they didn't cut the throw off. Well, the runner wasn't going anywhere. Yeah, and that pitch is in there for a strike. Well, it's 2 nothing Hilbert. Some really good base running there. Very alert. But that's the reason for that bunt. Remember, now yeah. you saw different moves and things happen of the pitcher to see exactly what the thought process was. The pitch. Down low for a ball on Hendricks. The pitch, outside for a ball. 
Today, so far, the first inning has been great for Hilbert. Eight runs in the first inning of game one, and so far, two in the first inning of game two. The pitch outside. And the count goes full, three and two. Here's the pitch. Line right at the second baseman, and he makes the catch, does Max Odom, and the inning is over. But Hilbert gets two runs on two hits and an error, and they leave a man on. After one complete, Hilbert two, Wells nothing. Hilbert College Baseball is being brought to you by the Big Tree Inn here on Buffalo Sports Page. Celebrating 50 years of business in Niagara County, Comfort Plastics manufactures a wide variety of consumer goods. You can buy our popular patio furniture at leisureaccents.com, our classic snow sleds at theretroracer.com, and know that all of our products are proudly made in the USA, and your purchase supports 150 hardworking families right here in Western New York. Comfort Plastics, a believer in the American dream, Learn more at ConfortPlastics.com or like us on Facebook. We move to the top half of the second inning. A.J. Campy, Zach Young, and Lance Phillips, the first three batters, scheduled to, to face J.R. Hasferger. His teammates gave him a 2-0 lead as we start the top half of the second inning. Here's the pitch. A little bit low and away. Ball one, 1-0. One Haas on the season. He's pitched 7.2 innings so far this season with a 4.70 ERA. Of those seven innings, he's got six strikeouts. That's down low, 2 0. Oh. Those are just missing. Like they can't be missing by much right now. Hasperger walked two in the first inning. Was on the front end of a double play of an attempted bunt that he caught and threw to first. That's down low, ball three, 3 0. Oh. Haas is another one who likes to work fast. He doesn't wait. He wants to get going up there and start his pitches right away. The pitch inside, ball four, and for the second straight inning, the leadoff batter draws a base on balls. I appreciate, I appreciate fast workers. Well, you do as a fielder, too, because you don't want to be standing around before you get in your set position. You want to be able to get in that set quickly and be ready to go so that mentally you are ready to happen what happens in this game. First baseman Zach Young is the batter. Campy gets his lead from first. Not a very big lead at the moment. Oh, high and tight ball one, one and oh. I will say, if you remember, you made a big comment on Haas the first, uh, on the first inning and how he was very deliberate on his approach. He's a, he sped up his approach, if you're looking. There's a breaking ball and a beauty in there for a strike to even the count at one and one. That's the other thing that Haas does real well. When sometimes that fastball might not be there, his breaking ball is nasty and will work to his advantage where he can throw that for strikes. The pitch. Breaking ball. Oh, he called that a strike. One and two. I don't think the Wells bench liked that one at all. Ooh. Wow. I was surprised at that one. One and two on Young. The pitch. He reaches out and fouls it off to the right. The count holds at one and two. But I like the defensive swing right there. What he was doing is to make sure he doesn't get that strike three called against him. Just make sure you get the bat on the ball so you don't get that strike called. The pitch. Ripped down the third baseline and just foul. Didn't miss by much, but a foul ball. One and two 
on Zach Young, the big first baseman. Tell you, I'm looking for the breaking ball on the outside corner right there. See if you can get it to break off the plate. The pitch. Ripped into left field for a base hit. And Wells has a threat going here. Runners at first and second with nobody out. So it was exactly what, what I said I expected the call to be. If you saw, we saw our catcher right there set up on the outside, right? That's Griffin McAndrews. He sets up on the outside of the plate right there. You saw, though, the curveball doesn't get a chance to get to the outside, covers a little too much of the plate, and that's where he does a great job of nice piece of hitting right there. Lance Phillips is the batter now. Wells with their biggest threat of the day. So far, first and second, nobody out. A walk and a base hit to start the top of the second. Hilbert with a 2-0 lead. First baseman Patrick Whalen way in off the bag. No sign of a bunt there. The pitch. Breaking ball bounced. Ellison, oh, what a play. Backhands it, steps on the bag, throws to first. And they got him at first, a double play. What a play by Whelan at first. First Ellison at third. No, I, they may talk about this. I think they're going to talk about to see if he pulled his leg right here. Well, let's see. Salamone, the bases umpire, called him out. Great play by Ellison. Very alert to backhand it. And they're going to so, say he pulled him off and he's safe at first. So Wells gets a break there. Becomes a fielder's choice but a great play by Ellison to get the force out at third, unassisted. So one out, now we have Young at second and Phillips on at first. Campy is erased on the force play and a batter now is the catcher, Bradley Mills. Chop foul at home plate, nothing in one. You could sell Wells, no doubt, having much better at-bats in this game than they did the last game right here. And really coming out aggressive in this second inning, really going after that first pitch strike. Mills, the catcher. Now here's Hasferder. Runners lead from first and second. Swing and a miss. Nice breaking ball there. That's the breaking pitch you were talking about. Exactly. And I'm telling you, I'm going to look to do the same thing. But it's the same pitch I said that had to happen. That break's got to come off the plate, something that takes it outside almost into the other batter's box. Nothing in two on Mills. And he skies one down the left side, fouling out of play, and the count holds it nothing in two. That's the same thing. Do you see how they're kind of hanging right there? They're not getting, um, they're not getting right now, um, They're not getting to the outside of the plate, right? They're literally hanging right over to the middle. That one's down low and outside, and the count goes to one and two. But I still like that one better. You see how he got it to the outside? That's a pitch you want to make sure. It's 0-2. It's you don't want to make it so it's something they get a good bat on the ball. Hasferder checks the runner and the pitch. Swing and a miss, strike three. He struck him out. Hasford are pumped up by that strikeout, and now there are two away. That's his first strikeout of the day. Nice off speed right there. That really was. You saw when you saw the, the batter actually goes down to his knee to make the swing. That's when you know your off speed pitch was exactly where it needed to be. So two outs and two on. Chris McLean, the, McLean, the left fielder, is the batter. The pitch. Up a little high for a ball, 1-0. and oh. Asperger had a little something on that one. But what good pitchers do is they realize what pitch works for them, and you make the adjustments as the game goes on. You have to work on those other pitches in warm-ups. Yeah, that pitch is low for a ball, 2-0. and oh. And when I say in warm-ups, too, I'm saying in between innings. If you know that off-speed's not working or you know that fastball's not working or the slider's not working, that's got to be worked on in between those innings. Hasperger would like to get out of this inning and just face the 
top of the order in the top of the third. Two on, two outs, the pitch. In there for a strike. And again, the Wells dug out, not too pleased with that call. Well, if you remember, it's a different strike zone yeah. from one game to the other, but it's different guys behind the plate. You're going to get different strike zones. Hasberger out of the stretch. The pitch. Breaking ball, bounce to Ellis in the third, gloves it, throws to second for the force out, and the inning is over. So Hasferter works out of another jam, and after an inning and a half, it's Hilbert two, Wells nothing. Hilbert College Baseball is being brought to you by the Big Tree Inn, and you are watching Buffalo Sports Page. Bottom half of the second inning, and Alex Ellison takes a ball high and tight as he leads off here for Hilbert. The pitch. Chopped foul at home plate. Count goes to one and one. Hilbert with two in the first. They lead this one 2-0. They won the opener 13 to nothing. Here's the pitch. And he tried to check his swing as he backed away and Fouled it off, the count goes to one and two. Mason Smith on the mound here for Wells. The Express. I like that nickname, the Express. The pitch. Called strike three. Nice pitch there. Of course, you know who was called the Express, don't you? Yep. The late great Ernie Davis. And the better now is the catcher, Griff McAndrew. The pitch. Tries to check his swing, but it's a called strike anyway. Fastball there from Mason Smith. One of the harder pitchers he's thrown. Here's the pitch. Foul down the right side. Well, maybe not foul. Right fielder heading over. And he makes the catch. Nice running grab by A.J. Campy. And there are two away. And I think he actually caught that in fair territory. I got a little ahead of myself there. And the batter now will be the left fielder, Billy Labello. Billy made an appearance in the first game. Left-handed batter. Wells would no doubt get a big lift from a 1-2-3 inning because they haven't had too many today. 1-0 on Lobello, left-handed batter. The pitch, chopped foul right back at us. Count evens at 1-1. One and one.
Here's the pitch from Smith. Little high, little outside. Ball two, two and, oh, two and one, excuse me. The pitch. And there's a ground ball into left field for a base hit by LaBello, and it will not be a one, two, three inning for Wells. As LaBello gets a hit, it'll bring us back to the top of the order. It'll be John Riviere Vejas. Got a base hit, stole the base and scored in the first inning. Right-handed batter. LaBello gets his lead from first. The pitch. In there for a strike at the letters, nothing in one. Throw over to first. Nice play by the first baseman, Zach Young. Throw was off the bag, a little high and wide, but he was able to pull it in. Fabello gets his lead. Here's the pitch. Foul off to the right out of play. play. Labello stakes out his lead one more time. Mason Smith to the plate. Flying drive into left center field. And he'll get down for a base hit and Hilbert has a threat going with back-to-back -back base hits here in the bottom half of the second inning. So Labello moves to second. Riviera Vejas gets his second hit of the game, and the batter now is Patrick Whalen, who was called out on strikes his first time up in this game. Bottom of the second, two down, runners at first and second, two nothing Hilbert. Big spot here for Mason Smith and the Wells Express. The pitch, down low, ball one, one and oh. Whalen, big, powerfully built, left-handed batter with the batting gloves on both hands. The pitch. And he'll sky one out to center field. Jack Odom makes the catch to end the inning. He gave it a ride, but Odom was there. No runs, couple of hits, no errors, a couple of men left on base after two complete. Hilbert, two, Wells, nothing. Hilbert College Baseball is brought to you by the Big Tree Inn, and you are watching Buffalo Sports Page.
top of the batting order to face J.R. Hesperter here in the top of the third. Here's the pitch to Max Odom, and he takes a ball down low, 1 and 0. Odom walks his first time up. High and tight, ball two. He was doubled off when Zach Odom tried to bunt, and Hesperter caught it and fired to first base to complete the DP. Hasperter fires. High and away. Ball three. Three and oh. So I apologize, folks. We had some we had some uh, linking issues that all of a sudden happened right there, and we lost some of our graphics. I was trying to keep us up live so that you could at least see the game, but that's why you saw some uh, issues going on. I apologize, but we we're doing everything so we stayed up for you and fought through that, and I think we've got it all figured out right now. Three and one on Odom. Swing and a miss. Strike two. Three and two. Asperger trying to come back from 3-0 and to get the out here. He winds it up and fires inside, and I think that actually hit him. And for the third straight inning, Wells will get the leadoff batter on base, and this will bring up Zach Odom, who actually bunted into a double play his first time up. Bunted it, got it up a little too high. Asperger came off the mound, caught it, and fired to first base to double up the base runner. So Zach Odom now the batter. Max Odom gets his lead from first. Being held on by Patrick Whalen. The pitch to the plate, way up high, a breaking ball that didn't really break anywhere close to the way he wanted it to. And it's ball one. Gilbert with two in the first to get that two nothing lead. The pitch. Ooh, good pitch, but he called it high for a ball, 2-0. Oh. That's been the pitch that's been, everyone's been kind of going back and forth with. We saw it happen earlier, right, and we're not seeing it happen at other times. Odom gets his lead from first. The pitch, swing and a miss, strike one, 2-1. and one. He had a good rip at that pitch, and a good pitch, too. 2-1. Two and one. The pitch, bouncing ball towards second, and Bejas will glove it. The throw to first is in time, and they get an out. That was a really nice play by Riviere Bejas and Patrick Whalen to get the out at first. And Whalen saves another out over there. You see that. Yeah, and, and, you know, at, at first I, I think I blinked as far as I the ball because I was like, wait, wait, where did it go? I was looking for a possible attempt at a double play, but obviously that never happened. The ball really wasn't hit hard enough. Here's Jacoby James with the runner in scoring position and one away. The pitch. Low and inside, ball one, one and oh. Nice play there by John Riviere Vejas and especially by Patrick Whalen. He's saved a whole bunch of runs today, hasn't he? He really has over at first base defensively. The pitch to James, off the outside corner for a ball. You can see the Wells team much more into this game. You can see more vocal in the dugout than we saw pretty much the entire last game. The pitch, breaking ball stays high and tight. That's what it looks like Hosferder wanted right there. His pitch count must be getting up fairly high. I'm about 52 right now. The pitch. That's in there for a strike. No doubt about that one. Three and one. Kobe James, great hitters count here. Runner on second, one away, top of the third. Two nothing Hilbert. Here's the pitch. And a line drive into left field for a base hit. Here comes Odom around to score. It's a two to one game. And Jacoby James will dive into second with a two base hit and a run batted in. And it's a two to one game. So 
Jacoby James cuts the lead in half, and that'll bring up Aaron Izcayardo, the DH, who flew out to the right fielder his first time up. And you mentioned, Tom, how much more into this game Wells is, and that got him even more into the game. It's their first run of the entire day. Yes, sir. The pitch. Foul down the right side, nothing and one. Ronnie Morton got the win in the first game for Hilbert. Pitched six outstanding innings. Here's the pitch. High fly ball, well hit to left field. Left fielder going back, and it's gone. It's out of here. Aaron Iscayardo with a two run home run, and Wells leads three to two. Their first lead of the day. And our first home run of the day. And Wells, for the first time today, leads three to two. A very happy Wells dugout to finally get some runs and to take a lead. Still only one out in the inning. And this will bring up A.J. Campy, who walked his first time up. The pitch. Swung on and foul tipped. Nothing in one. You could actually hear the wind now blowing into our uh, headsets. And the wind's not blowing out. It's blowing kind of side to side is what it's blowing. It's blowing from right field to left field. Pitch is a little bit low for a ball. High fly ball into shallow right field. The right fielder is there and makes the catch. Dustin Henry Hendricks makes the catch for the second out of the inning. So and one thing about the outfielders, they have to deal with the sun and a little bit of a breeze. And Hendricks making the play for the second out of the inning, and that'll bring up Zach Young, the first baseman, who got a base hit his first time up in the second inning. The pitch on the outside corner for a strike. The breaking ball, nothing in one. The pitch, down low, ball one, one and one. No, you can hear the dugout, Zach Young's nick nickname is Big Cat. Andres Galarraga, yeah, El, El that's Gato. Exactly, yeah. And as a chopper down the third baseline, Ellison gloves, fires to first way up high over Whelan, and Young will head down to second base. Now, there's nothing Whelan could do about that one. That'll be, I would imagine, a base hit and an error. It would, uh, I, well, maybe it'd just be an error. I'm not sure. That was tough play. It looked like he might have had time, and the throw was so high. And they have a runner at second for Lance Phillips. Two away, three runs in. Phillips the batter. Hasperger would like to stop this right now. Oh, there's no doubt. Yeah, he wants to get out of this inning. And you're starting to wonder, the bullpen is warming up over there. So you start to wonder, is this going to be the last inning right here? So it's something he wants to work out and work out of very quickly. And you'd mentioned he'd only pitched seven innings on the season so far. Here's the pitch. Breaking ball and a beauty for a strike. His off speed has been there today. Yes. There's no doubt about that. I mean, there's been a couple that he left hanging, but his off speed has been definitely his better pitch today. Zach Young on at second with two down and three runs in here in the top of the third. The pitch. Another breaking ball. That's a ball. That evens up at one and one. The pitch, that's in there for a strike. Nice pitch there, and the count goes to one and two. Lance Phillips. 
safe on a fielder's choice by the third baseman, Ellison, in the second inning. And here's the one-two pitch. High fly ball, left fielder. Labello is there and makes the catch to end the inning. But Wells does some damage. They get three runs and leave a man on base. And after two and a half, it's Wells three, Hilbert two. Hilbert College Baseball is being brought to you by the Big Tree Inn. And you are watching Buffalo Sports Page. Bottom half of the third, and Hilbert playing for, from behind for the first time all day. Trailing three to two, Jack Duffick. Jairo Santos and Nolan Evans, the first three batters scheduled to face right-hander Mason Smith. Duffick got a base hit and scored in the first inning. The pitch, high and tight, ball one, one and out. Smith fires on the outside corner for a strike, one and one. The pitch bounces in there, two and one. The pitch. A little bit low, two and one. And I'm sure the Wells dugout wanted that pitch no, too. I'm not, listen, <laughs> you're a coach, you want every one of those close <laughs> pitches. That's right. In there for a strike, count evens at two and two. Boy, he's feeding that spot, right? He's living right there on the corner. He's trying to get that batter. He wants him to roll over, pop up. He's doing everything he can. He's just sitting on that corner. The pitch. Chop foul. I believe I said two and two. It's actually three and two. I'll go by the scoreboard on this one. Now that I can actually see the scoreboard, it was drenched in sunshine, kind of like, uh, you know how that football scoreboard at Canisius, the, the uh, Stransky complex gets drenched mm -hmm. in sunshine? The same thing was happening here. Oh, that one hurt. A foul tip, yeah, and that, that one, one got Bradley him. Mills. Ooh, that one had to hurt. You know, walk it off, and... As you point out many times, a home plate umpire will walk out and talk to the pitcher, give the catcher a little time to recover. Yeah, a lot of people don't realize that's what's happening right there. Is that's the umpire looking out for the catcher. And you'll see the catcher will do that for the umpire. You ever see the umpire get hit, and the catcher will walk out to its picture and kind of just stall things for a little bit and say, hey, you know, you okay? And without making a big deal out of it, just making sure that they're looking out for each other. Mason Smith, the 3-2 pitch to Jack Duffick is on its way. High and tight ball for he walked him. So Hilbert gets the lead man on here in the bottom of the third, and that'll bring up Jairo Santos. And that feels like it's been the 25th walk today for <laughs> Duffick or uh, Whalen. <laughs> yeah, well, that's probably because it is. Jairo <laughs> Santos is the battery at a sacrifice fly and an RBI in the bottom of the first inning. The pitch, 
He skies one into right center field. Right fielder going over and is there and makes the catch. And there's one away. A.J. Campy making the catch there. And Duffick will go back to first base. The batter now is Nolan Evans. And he was safe on an error. His first time up. The pitch. In there for a strike. Nothing and one. The pitch. High and tight. He checked his swing. And they appeal. And the umpire on the bases, Jim Salamone, says, nope, he did not swing. Throw over to first. Duffick is back, standing. Well, I mean, I don't see the threat right there right now. You could see is, is Duffick doesn't have a huge lead right here that I'm worried about going over to first base. The pitch to the plate, lined into right field. The right fielder misjudged the ball. It's over his head. Duffick hits second. He's on his way to third, and he'll stand there and and. Uh, Evans is in at second base with a double. A.J. Campy, I think, had a little trouble judging that one. And they're runners at second and third. With just one away on the double by Evans. And it'll bring up Dustin Hendricks. Hilva trying to respond right now. This is the first inning they've gone behind in the entire game. So think about we're 10 innings into this right now, and it's the first time they've been behind at all. The pitch to Hendricks. Bouncing ball into center field. The base hit. We're tied at three. Here comes the second run. Here comes the throw. Cut off. And Hilbert very quickly retakes the lead at four to three on the two-run single by Dustin Hendricks. Runner at first, four to three, Hilbert. Just one away, and Alex Ellison is the batter. He struck out swinging his first time up, and I dare say that's how you answer. Quickly, with authority. And it was all about what? That first batter getting on, and how many times? How many times do those walks cost you that cost runs for the team that gets the walk? Up high for a ball, and we, we don't know uh, A.J. Campy how much trouble, if any, he had with the sun on that double. Ball was hit hard. He looked like he misjudged it at first, and by the time he turned to go the other way, it was too late. The ball was down. And you could even say, I mean, the wind. I mean, there's a lot of things going on right now. And you're looking straight at those flags if you're in right field, and it looks like the wind is blowing in is what it looks like. The pitch to the plate. In there for a strike to Alex Ellison. Two balls, one strike on the... Right-handed batting third baseman. The pitch of Ha, ooh, in there for a strike. Okay, <laughs> fooled me. <laughs> He's been consistent with that pitch, though. He's been calling it a strike all day. Uh, one and two on Alex Ellison. The pitch. Top foul, ooh, very close. Just foul down the third baseline. One and two on Ellison. No doubt we're trying to get these games done. We gotta get back for the LSU versus <laughs> Iowa game tonight. <laughs> the pitch, and he fought that one off and fouls it out of play. Angel Reese and Caitlin Clark, what a yep. showdown. It's almost a shame it's not the championship Yeah, game. It, it is something, too. But, I mean, you still got South Carolina in the mix that is so good. Yeah, yeah you're right about that. The pitch. A little low on outside for a ball. Count goes full at three and two. The pitch, called strike three on the outside corner, and there are two away. 
that will bring up Griff McAndrews, the catcher, who flew out to the right fielder his first time up. That's funny. With the way that he's right now living on that outside corner, are we watching how many balls are going out to right field? That's because of him sitting on that outside corner. What good hitters have to do to get that hit is that's where they've got to go. They've got to make sure that ball's going out to right field instead of trying to put it over to right or to center and try to get around on the ball. That's that rollover that the pitcher's trying to get you to do. Pitch is low and away for a ball, ball one to Griff McAndrews. The pitch just off the outside corner, 2-0. and now the big question will Hilbert be is, do they send Hosfordter back out here for the top of the fourth? The pitch, bounced in the dirt, gets past the catcher, and Hendricks will take off for second base. Nothing Bradley Mills could do about that one. Mason Smith fires down low, ball four, he walked him. And Hilbert continues their threat. He slipped on that one. I don't know if you saw that, Stu. He actually slipped on that last one. That's why it came out so low down there. I, I did not see him slip. There are runners at first and second with two away, two runs in in the bottom of the third, and Billy LaBello, the left fielder, is the batter. He got a base hit his first time up. Bell hitting 325 on the season. The pitch in there for a strike, nothing in one. I like that because what they were doing there is you watch where that third baseman was playing, right? And the third baseman was playing a little bit back and he was looking to try to get a base hit out of that. And the pitch is a ball, one and one. The pitch, bouncing ball towards short. Gloved by Jacoby James, throws to first and he bounces in the dirt, gets past the first baseman. A run will score, it's five to three and the runners at the corners. So Jacoby James made the pickup, the throw was bad and that allows Hendricks to score and sends McAndrews scooting all the way around to third. First and third, two away and it's five to three Hilbert on the air. Maybe the toughest part that we've seen today really has been that throw from shortstop and yeah. third base. It's really been tough for all the fielders today. It seems like everything's been on the run instead of being able to get their feet set and make that throw like they want to. Go back to the top of the order. Pitch is in there for a strike, nothing and one on John Riviere Vejas. He's two for two with a stolen base and a run scored so far in this game. No. Wells had a lead briefly, and Hilbert has answered. Throw over to first. I can't see down either line to see if either team has anybody warming up. Hilbert does have somebody over there on the mound right now. They had somebody warming up last inning, though. The pitch bounces in the dirt, way up in the air, and the runner from third will score. And going all the way to third is the runner from first. So it's six to three now as McAndrews comes around to score and LaBello goes all the way to third. That one hit the dirt or the turf right near home plate, went straight up in the air and took about three seconds to actually come down. By then, it was too late and it's six to three late for Wells to do anything about it, I should say. The pitch, foul out of play, well off to the right. You, you gotta give Hilbert credit on this inning. I mean, you come down, it's the first time you give up a lead. A lot of teams, you could bury your heads, right? You could talk about something negative that happened and you come right out with the answer that you need. The pitch, bouncing ball 
and the second baseman gloves it. The throw to first is not in time, and a run scores. And make it seven to three. Labello scores. And now the Patrick Whalen will bat, so Hilbert is batted around here in the inning. Two outs and a runner on at first. Coach is going to do something here. Not sure if he's coming out to talk to his pitcher. Or I, no, it looks like he's going to walk right back. That was a, a great effort there. It was past Zach Young, the first baseman. Max Odom, the second baseman, came over to try and make the play. And now we have a visit to the mound. And by the time the pitcher Smith got over there to try to cover first, it was too late. And that was that was one of those balls that's hitting the spot no man's yeah, land. Yeah, it literally he it. just it's almost like you couldn't go out and place yeah. the ball out in the field in the position any better. And he obviously shows the speed that he has. It's the reason why he's a leadoff hitter to show that speed off. And because of his speed, he gives himself a base hit right there. And that's his third hit of the game. So are we going to get a pinch runner here? Did something happen? What's going on here? Yeah, he's pointing at him right now. Looks like we're getting a runner for yep. John Riviere Vejas. It's three for three on the day. Let's see who's going to run for oh, him. Oh, I think he hurt himself. That's Look at He's got a little I'm, bit of a limp right yeah, there. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm thinking, unfortunately. You, you wonder if he hurt himself going in as he dove into first base right there. Woody Fisher is the runner, number 15. And now Patrick Whalen set to step into the batter's box. Seven to three, Hilbert leading this one. The pitch, swing in a foul off to the left, nothing in one. Hey, it's still a lot of ways to go in this one. Remember, we're going nine innings, so we got a long ways to go, and it will go deep into the pitching stats for each of these teams. And the pitch is bounced in there for a ball. One and one. Five runs in in the inning. Down low, ball two. Two and one. The pitch. Down low, three and one. The bullpen is up for Wells, so you wonder is, you know, if there's a walk here or another hit, you wonder how much longer he'll be going right now. The pitch. Ripped down the first baseline. That's a fair ball. Fisher goes around to third. Whalen stops at first with a base hit. And that'll bring up Jack Duffy. With runners at first and third. Duffix, didn't he start this off? Uh, he yeah. started off with a walk to be able to get in the first run of the inning. You have a fabulous <laughs> memory. Yes, he did. And there's no move to remove Mason Smith. First and third, two down. Five in in the inning so far. Duffick takes a ball up high, 1-0. and oh. well, You do got to remember, like I said, is there's still six more innings in this game, right? Yeah. So you've got to either ride somebody in this game. The pitch, down low, 2-0. and oh. I mean, think about it. The only guys right now that are off limits to Hilbert really is Mort. Yeah. I even believe you could you, you could see Hedinger come back. Yeah, why not? He only pitched one inning, and it was a pretty clean and quick inning. The pitch, that's in there for a strike, 2-1. and one. Two and one on Duffick. Got a base hit and scored. Got a, was walked and scored here. So he scored twice in this game already. The pitch. Low one outside for a ball. Three and one. In there for a strike, three and two. 
But I do believe that's not a pitch you want to be swinging at if you're a hitter. That was a pitcher's pitch right there. Hit his spot perfectly right at the top of the zone. Not sure that was the right one to hit for a hitter, though. He lobs a throw over to first base. Two down, runners at first and third. Five in in the inning so far. We're in the bottom of the third. The pitch, and it's ball four, and the bases are loaded. Oh, he called it a third strike. I'm sorry. My bad. Called strike three. The inning is over. And Hilbert gets five in the third, and they lead it seven to three after three. Hilbert College Baseball is brought to you by the Big Tree Inn. And you are watching Hilbert College Baseball on Buffalo Sports Page. And we have a new pitcher for Hilbert, left-hander Ryan Hilton out of St. Francis. Now on the mound, and he'll face Bradley Mills, Chris McLean, and Max Odom. Hilbert now with a 7-3 lead here as we start the top of the fourth. Hilton is a left-hander facing Bradley Mills, who struck out swinging his first time up. Ryan has a twin brother. He does. He does. It, it does his brother pitch too? He has when he was in the uh, younger. He played more of a positional player, though, also. The pitch. A little high and outside, and it's 2-0. and oh. High pop-up, foul and out of play. And now the ball actually comes back in play. It hit the backstop above us. The pitch, high and tight, or high and away actually, and it's three and one. The pitch to Mills, ball four, he walked him. So Wells gets the lead man on here in the top half of the fourth inning. The first question I would ask the pitchers really is, is something different with the footing there? Because every pitcher has come in, and I don't want to say struggle, but it really has has not found the zone right away. Yeah, yeah, that's a really good point. And you're right. They probably It's a different mound from what they're used to pitching on. Swing and a miss. Chris McClain couldn't check that swing, and it's nothing in one. That, that was a high fastball that kind of tied him up. Pitch is on the outside corner for a strike. It's nothing in two. 
and, and Hilbert is used to playing on a grass field. That's their home field is a grass field right now. They redid the infield. They're going to be uh, getting a chance to play that the first time next week. Oh, didn't miss by much there, and it's one and two. Well, that would be a question I'd ask where that would miss. I, that would be I'd, <laughs> I'd ask as a coach, I won't lie. You must have been fun to watch as a coach. <laughs> no, I was quiet. Uh, well... There's a line drive foul down the third base side. Wait a second, you were quiet? I was on the bench, I really was. I didn't really say much, unless I really had a question about something. But I like to sit on the bucket, and I'd coach third base. That's where I was most loud on third base. I'm just surprised that, that anyone would refer to you, my friend, <laughs> as quiet. A pitch has popped up and foul and out of play. You may be a lot of things. Quiet isn't one I necessarily associate with. There you. are times. I mean, like I said, as well. I mean, of course, when I talk, everybody knows I'm loud. And if you've done, well, seen my interviews, folks, you know that. Yeah, you know, we love those <laughs> interviews. I'm just teasing you a little bit here. The pitch off the outside corner for a ball. Count goes for two and two. Nice, nice, nice command of the zone, though. I mean, when he's missed, he hasn't missed by much, though. He's really been very close to the zone. Ball three, three and two. Mills walked to start the inning, and now he's gone full on McLean. Top of the order is next. Swing and a miss, strike three. He struck him out. One away. And they'll go back to the top of the order for Max Odom, who was hit by a pitch and came around to score in the third. Max Odom, he comes from Elmira also, hitting 338 on this on the season. He's a senior for the Wells team. Swing and a miss, strike one, nothing in one. That's that off speed. We've seen that really been the key to multiple pitchers that have pitched today. The pitch. Another breaking ball, that one stays high and outside. I mean, think about Mort, his, his breaking ball was, I thought, the key to success today. Really, you thought Hosperter was the same exact thing, and now you're seeing Hilton come in and do the same thing. The pitch, breaking ball fouled back onto the screen. Mills on at first with one away in the top of the fourth. Ryan Hilton in his first inning of work on in relief is J.R. Hansbeter. Here's the pitch. High pop up, foul and out of play. Actually, it came right back down in play. <laughs> I'm expecting again, Stu, right here. Another off speed pitch somewhere inside. And that one, you got the off speed, but it stayed outside. So it looks like it didn't break on that one is all that it did. The pitch. Outside again. And now the count goes full at three and two. The pitch, down low, ball four. That's the second walk of the inning for Hilton. And there's first and second with one away. And the batter now will be Zach Odom. It's runners at first and second. And Odom hit into a double play in the first, bounced out to the second baseman in the third. Runners lead from first and second. Hilton pitches. High, ball one, one and oh. And before you do ask me, the, the uh, Hilbert bullpen <laughs> is warming up. <laughs> but I do like the way Hilton's throwing. I really do. It's not that far away from the zone. There's a pitch for a strike. Count evens at one and one. My question is, how deep do their bullpens go? I mean, double headers are tough. The weather's tough at this time of year. You know what I'm saying? So, the, so the, as you mentioned before, they need pitchers. 
There's 15 pitchers on the Hilbert staff that have an ERA. Wow, okay. <laughs> well, that makes sense. Right? You think Absolutely it. it does. Chop foul at home plate. Balls and one strike on Zach Odom. Look at that right side of the infield right now, Stu. It's at only the first baseman. It's almost playing like he's at second. Foul back onto the screen. The count will even up at two and two, and the ball sticks in the fence. That was cool. I don't know why I thought that was cool. It was just stuck Let in me the see fence. if I could just go to the other alignment so you could see. Take a look right now, everybody. You could see right now where the first baseman's playing. He's playing out towards second base right now. Checks the base runners and pitches. Called strike three, a beautiful curveball. Catches the inside corner, and Zach Odom is called out on strikes. That's the second strike. He's got two walks and two strikeouts in the inning. Goes Ryan Hilton. The batter now is Jacoby James. And he's done it with the off speed, right? Another yes, off speed pitch right there. And James walked his first time up and scored when Aaron Izquierdo homered. And if you think about it, it could have been three because that one was a borderline strike call on the one that he had to walk on. Yeah, that's true. The pitch. James chops it foul down the third base side. Gloved by Alex Ellison and thrown back in. Stretches and pitches. And in there for a strike. Nothing in one. Yeah, excuse me, nothing in two. I read the scoreboard and they only had one strike up there. Yeah, you got to look at my scoreboard still. I, 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 can't, I can't see it, but I'm sure you're 100% correct. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss. Strike three. He struck him out and strikes out the side. No runs, no hits, two walks. A couple of men left on base after three and a half. Hilbert seven, Wells three. Hilbert College Baseball is brought to you by the Big Tree Inn. And you are watching Buffalo Sports Page. Bottom half of the fourth inning, Mason Smith fires, and it's a ball, 1-0. and oh. And the pitch. Iro Santos bounces it to the second baseman. Glove throws to first in time for the out. Max Odom to Zach Young, and there's one away. 
better now will be Nolan Evans. <laughs> Nolan Evans on the season, hitting 281 with 10 RBIs on the season. Right-handed batter, Mason Smith fires. High pop-up foul off the backstop, nothing in one. <laughs> Evans will be followed by Dustin Hendricks. Had a big two-run hit in the third inning. Did Hendricks, the pitch. Bounces, and it's a ball. Bounced in there. One and one on Nolan Evans. The pitch. In there for a strike on the breaking ball. It's one and two. The pitch. On the outside corner for a called strike three. And they're two away. And I think that was a great pitch. That really was. He really hit the corner perfectly on that one. Dustin Hendricks is the batter. Retired by the second baseman in the first and had a two run hit in the third. The pitch. High foul fly out of play, nothing in one. Two outs, nobody on base here in the bottom of the fourth. Another foul out of play, and it's 0-2 on Dustin Hendricks. Boy, I'll tell you, we thought he was going to get pulled at the end of the last inning, and he comes out this inning and looks like a star. Yeah. <laughs> That's baseball, right? It, 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 it can be. Chopped one slowly down the third baseline, and the third baseman will let it roll foul. Lance Phillips made the smart play to let that one roll. Looked like a mo for a moment, like it might stay fair, and then the closer it got to the third. Well, base he did a good bag. job of watching it, right? Yeah, he, he really did, did. and then made sure when it knew it was going to be foul, that's when the touch happened. Two strikes on Hendricks. The pitch, bouncing ball to the second baseman, gloves it, fires over to first in time. Max Odom to Jack Young. And it's a one, two, three inning for Mason Smith. After four complete, Hilbert seven, Wells three. Hilbert College Baseball is brought to you by the Big Tree Inn. And you are watching Hilbert College Baseball on Buffalo Sports Page. Trent White has gone in at second base for Hilbert, replacing John Riviere Vejas, who was a little bit shaken up earlier in the game. And now it's Wells at bat here in the top half of the fifth. Bouncing ball over the mound. White gets it behind second base. The throw to first is in time. Nice play there. And there's one away. 
And that was Aaron Izcayedo. So Hilton gets some good defense there behind him, and there's one away, and the batter now is A.J. Campy, who uh, walked and flew out to the right fielder. Second inning of work for Ryan Hilton, the big left-hander out of St. Francis. That's a ball to Campy. Game two of our doubleheader, Hilbert won game one, 13 to nothing. They lead this one, seven to three, the pitch. On the outside corner for a strike, count evens at one and one. But I'll tell you, you gotta look at this game for Hilbert. This is two freshmen that have come out here. Hosford are now Hilton, and you've done two freshmen coming out and doing your job. Curveball and a beauty for a strike, it's one and two. That is a coach you gotta get excited yeah, about would, right there. I would say so. And the pitch, breaking ball, White gloves it. Throws to first, in time, nice play, Trent White. How about that, you go into the game and the first two balls are hit to you. And, and you make the great it. plays and you get a, you know help your team get out of the inning, that's what you want. Listen, you want as a pitcher, right? If you're gonna be a contact pitcher, this is what you want. You want the defense behind you and this is the perfect type field to play on so you're not getting any of those bad hops anywhere on the field. Zach Young is the batter, her ball, and it's a ball. <laughs> I thought it was going to be strike one. It was not. I also, Tom, I like to see sometimes the, the young people stay closer to home and play their college sport close to home. I don't know why I like that. It's just nice to see mom and dad. <laughs> I want to say he's so close to yeah, home. Well, yeah. It could be actually where I think he may be able to walk over there and still be close. Well, good for mm -hmm. him. To the pitch. High fly ball. Pretty well hit into right field. The right fielder. Gets underneath it and makes the catch. This Dustin Hendricks, and that's a one, two, three inning for Ryan Hilton. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left after four and a half. Hilbert seven, Wells three. Hilbert College Baseball is brought to you by the Big Tree Inn. And you are watching Hilbert College Baseball on Buffalo Sports Page. We have a pitching change for Wells. Noah Warner comes on in relief of Mason Smith. Smith pitched four innings and gave up all seven runs. Warner will face Alex Smith, Griff McAndrews, and Billy Labello. Here in the bottom of the fifth, Hilbert leading this one seven to three. Ellison has been struck out twice, once swinging, once called out on strikes, takes a ball in tight one and oh. Noah Warner out of Canastillo, New York. The pitch. Foul out of play. One and one. I'll tell you, I think we're going to see a third inning right here from uh, Hilton as you don't see anything happening right now in the bullpen for 
for Hilbert. Well, Hilton had a one, two, three, so that one stays way up high and it's two and one. And I'll tell you, we're gonna be talking this season for those of you who are local high school uh, advocates, Gowanda's got a top team here. In fact, they've already got to commit to play Division One baseball, Canisius. So they are going to be looking to have a big season this year and a chance to advance into the state tournament. Nice. Three balls and one strike on Alex Ellison, leading off the bottom of the fifth. If you remember, they got into the state tournament last year and had to play at Frontier and lost in the Far West Regionals. Ball four, he walked them. And Griff McAndrews, the catcher, is the batter. McAndrews flew out to right, drew a walk, and scored in the second inning. But here we go, another new pitcher in, and it's a little, you know, trying to find the zone right there. So, I, like I said, is I really would like to ask is, was there a footing issue that you were concerned or worried about as you were out on the mound to start things? The pitch. That's in there for a strike, nothing in one. pitch in there for a strike nothing in two throw over to first back in plenty of time is Alex Ellison Another throw over to first. You can see when we've seen that, that's when they felt that they got a runner that's going to be able to try to steal there. The pitch in there for a called strike three. Beautiful pitch there. And McAndrews is down on strikes. Good adjustment. Remember we talked about that. Are you having a footing issue? Are you feeling comfortable on the mound? I will say this, this was a switch. As you see now, you go from the wind up to the stretch. Sometimes the stretch can stop some of those moving parts right there and get you to settle in right there, especially when you're worried about footing or a lot of movement when it comes to being a pitcher on the mound. Billy Labello, the batter, takes a ball down low and inside. Labello got a base hit and was safe on an error and scored a run. There goes the runner from first. There's the throw down to second, the slide, the tag, he's safe. So Ellison steals second, and Hilbert has a runner at second with one away here in the fifth. What a great pitch to be able to take off on. As you saw, that was the off-speed pitch right there that he took off on and had a great jump so he could make sure he got there. Now Warner <laughs> backs off the rubber. Now he's getting set to go again. One and one on Billy Labello. The pitch. High and outside, two and one. Bouncing ball toward third, gloved by the third baseman. A long throw to first is high, but in time. Lance Phillips fires to first to get LaBello, and Zach Young makes a nice play on a throw that was a little bit high, and Phillips did a nice job of holding the runner at second base, and now there's two away. The runner at second, and I guess we're getting a pinch hitter here, huh? Let's see who this is. Well, I'll tell you, we've seen our first baseman's work. <laughs> They've really had to work for some of these outs today. Yes, they have. This is the top of the batting order, and the, the, this is... Uh, John Riviera Vejas' spot in the pitch, high and tight. Number 13, 18, and oh, number eight, okay, thank you. <laughs> high foul fly, <laughs> sorry. Tom and I are communicating. <laughs> I'm not always on top of it. <laughs> the pinch hitter is Derek Martinez. No, no, it's Emmanuel McLean, number eight out of Bishop Tiny. Manuel McLean, so far he's hitting 294 on the season. He's got an on-base percentage of 500 on the season. He's had 17 at-bats. Takes a ball outside there. One and two. 
one and uh, two and two on McLean. Runner on at second. The pitch. Foul off the catcher's glove. Count holds at two and two. Now would would McLean have oh no, he was at uh, time and not at St. Francis. I was gonna say would he have caught it caught Hilton, but they might have played against each other. No, I mean, who knows? Maybe even have pitched against each other, right? Yeah, right. Because uh, there's a lot of people that also pitch and play positions when they're in high school. Bounce to second. Odom to Young. And the inning is over. No runs. One hit. No errors. And a man left. After five complete, Hilbert seven, Wells three. Hilbert College Baseball is brought to you by the Big Tree Inn. And you are watching Hilbert College Baseball on the Buffalo Sports page. Top half of the sixth inning, and we have David Alisi, Dylan Alisi on the pitch for Hilbert. David Alisi, excuse me, not Dylan. And the first batter he will face is Jonathan Haynes. So it looks like he's batting for Lance Phillips. He was our starting pitcher first game, wasn't he? Yeah, I think you're right. I hadn't thought about that. So Hilton goes two innings. Alisi's pitch, swing and a miss, strike one. I thought Hilton pitched a good two innings right there too. I could, I, I, you know, I was expecting him to come out for a third. Yes. Foul down the right side. Nothing in two now on Haynes. But you know, at this point too of the season, you, you're, are you trying to save arms at this point? Are you trying to see more arms even, right? Or do you need to get some guys from work? Do you need to see them throw in some of these big situations, which may sometimes it's it's planned that I'm only going to have a pitcher go X amount of innings. The pitch. Swing and a miss, strike three. So Elise on three pitches strikes out Haynes, and there's one away in the top of the sixth. Bradley Mills, the catcher, is the batter, and Mills struck out swinging his first time up, drew a walk his second time up. We're in the top of the sixth. Hilbert leads this one seven to three. Elise fires in there for a strike. Nothing in one. He's the first pitcher that's coming to throw strikes. And but are you noticing what he's doing right now? 
he's not going from the windup at all. Do you see how he's going only from the stretch? Oh, my. I thought for sure that was going to be strike two. I think he and Hilbert did at the same time. <laughs> one and one. <laughs> wow. Here's the one one pitch. Chopped slowly and foul down the third baseline. Demetrius Rhodes behind home plate. Jimmy Salamone on the base pass. It was reversed in the first game and so they switched after the first game. To me, that's so hard on umpires yeah. because because whoever goes first behind the plate, you set the tone of what the zone looks like. And if you got a different zone, it doesn't matter whether it's good or bad, you are never going to hear the end of it. I, well, I couldn't <laughs> agree with that more. That is tough. That one's a ball down low. That was a strike the first game. Why is it that, you know, <laughs> that you'll never hear the end of it? Yeah. It's a no win. You're right about that. Here's the pitch. Checks his swing, slow roller in front of the plate. Elise, he picks it up, throws to first in time. Nice play, Elise getting off the mound quickly and firing over to the first baseman, Whalen. Two up and two down, and Chris McClain, the left fielder, is the batter. And McClain bounced out to the third baseman in the second and struck out swinging in the fourth. The pitch in there for a strike on the inside part of the plate. Well, he really has done a good job of pumping the zone. Yeah, though. you're not kidding. He's re you're right. The pitch in there for a strike again. Similar spot, nothing in two. I'm pretty sure McLean didn't care for either one of those two calls. I tell you, I think the only pitch he's thrown that wasn't a strike we thought was a strike yeah. even. <laughs> yeah. comes the 0-2 pitch. Just off the outside corner, ball one, one and two. Now, has Elise pitched a lot? Do, you, do we have any numbers on him? I'm curious. Uh, no, oh yes, uh, he's got a, he's a 2-0 record, two ERA and nine, um, uh, nine innings pitch. Four, four strikeouts, two base on balls right now. So uh, he's got two wins on the season. He's also got a save on the season too. How many innings they'll let him go, or how many pitches they'll let him throw? Well, he's only got 12 right now. I think he's going a little <laughs> bit, right? <laughs> yeah, I thought so too. I thought Hilton would be back. Here's the pitch, high and tight for a ball. But that's what I said. Is sometimes you come in and say, okay, once my starter comes out, I want X, Y, Z, right? I want each of them to get X amount of pitches, X amount of innings. Or I want to only see you go through the lineup one time so they see a new pitcher the next time they come through the lineup. Oh, we hit him. I don't think he wanted to do that. And McLean will trot down to first base after taking that one on the shoulder. So at least he puts a man on. It'll go back to the top of the order for Max Odom, who walked, got on base and scored and walked. I mean, that you think about, right? So that could be the thought process is, you're going to get an X out of the innings, but I'm only letting you go through the lineup once. I want them to see a different pitcher to come through with a different style, different velocity, different pitches to make it harder on the, the lineup. Pitches outside, gets past the catcher, McAndrews, and scooting down to second base is McLean. And there's a runner on second with two away. Max Odom, the batter. Checks the runner. Comes to the plate. High pop up, fouling out of play. Actually, it landed right behind home plate after hitting the backstop. Two away, runner down at second base. Top of the six, seven to three, Hilbert. He got two quick outs and then hit McLean. And then thrown more balls than we've seen him throw in the entire inning so far. <laughs> the 
The pitch. High pop up down the right side, and it'll get out of play. Whalen was giving chase, but he had no chance as the ball went out of play. So now the count's two and two. We're in the top of the sixth. Two down, runner at second, Hilbert up seven to three. The pitch. And he reaches out, did a nice job just forcing the pitcher to throw another pitch following that one off. Yep, that's a defensive swing right there. Do everything I can to keep the bat alive. Great job. You can't, I can't stress enough how much you say that to a hitter, right? Do everything you can to keep that at bat alive. The pitch. Foul out of play. Odom battling here, keeping the at-bat alive, just as you said. What you're trying to do is find the mistake, right? Get to the point where the mistake is so it's something over the plate that you can drive. There goes the runner to third. The pitch is chopped on the ground, foul down the third base side. So McLean will head back to second base. The 2-2 pitch, high fly ball into right field. Right fielder is there, and Hendricks makes the catch to end the inning. No runs, no hits, no errors. A hit batter and one man left on base after five and a half. Hilbert seven, Wells three. Hilbert College Baseball is brought to you by the Big Tree Inn, and you are watching Hilbert College Baseball on Buffalo Sports Page. Patrick Whalen leads it off for Hilbert. Pitch is high and away, a ball one, one and oh from Noah Warner. And the breeze has picked up in the last minute. He bounces one right to the first baseman. Young gloves it, runs to the bag for the out. Zach Young gets the put out there and there's one away. Better now is Jack Duffick. Got a base hit and scored in the first. Walked and scored and was called out on strikes. Warner fires. Line drive toward the past the pitcher to the second baseman. And Max Odom throws him out. So very quickly they're two away. 
That one started out like it was going to be a base hit, and once it got past the mound, it just died. Yeah, it just died. It did. I think he hit it off the end of the bat, which is why you heard that sound the way it came off the bat right there. And here is Jairo Santos, who got a sacrifice fly and an RBI in the first, flew out to right, bounced to second, and he takes a pitch off the outside corner for a ball, 1-0. The pitch, high and tight, backs him off the plate. The pitch, popped up, foul, out of play. Hilbert, um, bullpen is starting to get warmed up again. You may see somebody here different for the eighth, ninth, if we don't see uh, Alisi come out again. Here's the pitch. Breaking ball stays up high to Santos. Warner trying to get a one, two, three inning here for Wells. Foul back onto the screen, coming right back a little bit to our left. You can see the whole fence still is shaking, right? <laughs> his head to Mills, the catcher, and fires high and tight. Ball four, he walked him. So it will not be a one, two, three inning for Warner. And that will bring up Nolan Evans, safe on an error. Got a base hit and scored and was called down on strikes. Santos, the runner on at first. Warner pitches, whoa, high and tight. Goes back to the screen, Santos heads down to second base. That one, I think, got away from him a little bit. There wasn't anything the catcher Mills could do about that one as Evans had to back away from it. Unfortunately, was able to get out of the way of it. The pitch in there for a strike, and it's one and one. Breaking ball, bounced on the ground, into left field for a base hit, and they will hold Santos at third. First and third with two away. Excuse me, that was Nolan Evans with the base hit. Yes, it was Santos being held at third. And Nolan Evans gets the base hit, and the batter now is Dustin Hendricks. Retired by the second baseman, got a two-run hit in the third, and bounced out to the second baseman in the fourth. And we're in the bottom of the sixth with runners at first and third and two away. And Hilbert leading this one seven to three. Hilbert got two in the first. They fell behind three to two and then came back with a five run inning. Pitch is just off the outside corner for a ball, one and oh. The pitch off the outside corner for a ball, two and oh. If they're seeing that, you wonder if we're going to see that runner try to take off to, to second right there, try to get two runners in scoring position on this next one. Throw over to first, and Evans is back safely with the dive. And hence him thinking the same exact thing right there. Pitch, law caught right at the first baseman. Nice catch there by Zach Young. He tried to go to the right side, and Young was there to foil the bid. So after six complete, no runs, no hits, no errors. One hit, no errors, a walk, and two men left after six complete. Hilbert seven, Wells three. Hilbert College Baseball is brought to you by the Big Tree Inn, and you're watching Buffalo Sports Page.
top half of the seventh inning. Hilbert going for the doubleheader sweep. David Alisi back on the mound for the Hawks, and he will face Zach Odom leading off the top of the seventh. First pitch is down low for a ball, 1-0. and Jacoby James on deck for Wells. The pitch, swing and a miss. Good pitch there by Zach Odom. Elisi is starting his second inning of work here. He started off beautifully. He was doing nothing but pounding the, the zone with strikes. He's got to keep doing the same exact thing. The pitch, in there. Whoa, that was a beautiful pitch. One and two. Keep doing that, they won't hit it. That was a really sweet pitch. High fly ball, that could be trouble down the right field line. And it'll drop in foul territory. Patrick Whalen and Dustin Hendricks giving chase. And neither could get it, and the ball falls harmlessly in foul territory. I'll tell you, if Whalen was playing in a normal first base position, I'd say he may have had a shot at that. But you got to remember, he's really shading towards second base is the way he's shading right now. See where he is? Yes, I see. So a very tough spot to be able to get back there and be able to get one of those. The pitch. In tight for a ball. Is that still Hendricks in right field? I thought I saw it. It's like a number three, but I don't see a number three on their roster for Hilbert. Looks three like is Billy Labello. Oh, okay. How did I miss that? Am I looking at the, no, I got Hilbert, okay. You're right, he is. Foul out of play. They moved him from, did they move him from left field? Well, there was a couple of uh, positional moves, as you remember, right? Yeah. We we also saw uh, coming to second base, right? Uh, Benjamin Ratajek right over there at second base. Right. There's the pitch. Line drive. Oh, just off the shortstop's glove. Great effort there by Santos, but he, he got a glove on it. He went high on the backhand side with a dive, and the ball just came out of his glove. That's a great effort, and it'll be a base hit for Zach Odom to start the seventh inning. And this will bring up Jacoby James. Walked a couple of times and struck out swinging and has scored a run. Lisi checks the runner. And pitches to James. Swinging and a miss, strike one, nothing and one. I want to remind everybody once again, today's first game went seven innings. This game will go nine innings. At least, unless there's a tie, and then I guess they'll play extra innings, which right now, yeah, it's a little high and tight for a ball, one and one. Let me just say it's a scheduled nine inning game. How's that? There you go. How do you like how I extricated myself from that one? Because I would have picked on you later yeah, if something I, changed. Yes, <laughs> and I would have deserved it too. <laughs> one and one on James. Here's the pitch. High fly ball. That's well hit to deep right field. It'll bounce in front of the fence. And James will stop after rounding first. And they have first and second with nobody out. So Zach Odom stopped at second base. And James gets a long single. And that will bring up Aaron Iscayardo, who blasted a home run in the third inning. And he's one for three with two runs batted in. And very quickly that, that bullpen's moving over there for Hilbert. First and second and nobody out. It's a four run lead for the Hawks, but that could change quickly. Is Kayardo the only home run we've seen so far today? And Elise in a jam, first and second, nobody out. Hawks looking to turn two if they can. Beautiful pitch for a strike, nothing in one. Yeah. 
The pitch. Down a little bit low, one and one. You wonder how long they're thinking to let Elise go right here. Right now, the tying runner is standing right here in the on-deck circle. And here's the 1-1 one, one pitch. Inside, ball two, two and one. For Elise at about 34 pitches right now, too. Patrick Whalen playing nowhere near first base. So there's a lot of room for him to shoot well, the ball they're, through. They're obviously playing for the double play over there, what they're doing, taking away the middle. And there's a long drive into left center field. Left fielder going back, and he makes a great catch at the fence. What a play by Billy Labello. That's now Labello's in right. In right yeah. So I didn't see the number of whoever made the, left, the catch in left field. A great catch by the left fielder, and there's one away, and the runners go back to first and second. Let's see if he can turn around and they can spot a number there. Is it two? Could be. That'll bring up uh, A.J. Campy. The pitch. High and tight for a ball. Was that Connor Houck out that's, there? That's who I thought it yeah, may be. Yeah, I think you're right. Good call. Nice catch by Connor Houck out of Lancaster. Campy, the batter. First and second. One away. Bouncing ball toward short. Gloved by Santos. The second for one. Back to first. In time for the double play. And Hilbert gets out of it without any damage. Beautifully done by the Hawks after six and a half. It's Hilbert seven, Wells three. Hilbert College Baseball is brought to you by the Big Tree Inn, and you're watching Buffalo Sports Page. Bottom half of the seventh inning, Alex Ellison leads off here for Hilbert. The Hawks with a 7-3 to three lead. Noah Warner winds it up and fires. On the outside corner for a strike, and it's nothing in one. What a big double play right there for Hilbert last inning. Breaking ball in there for a strike, and it's nothing in two. You were really starting to feel like there was some momentum really going towards Wells' way right there that they could have easily taken advantage of. And then the, the DP. Here's the pitch. Bouncing ball right back to Warner. And he'll throw it over to Young at first, and there's one away. And that will bring up Griff McAndrews, the catcher, who flew out, walked and scored, and was called out on strikes his last time up. The pitch. A little high and away for a ball, 1-0. and oh. The pitch. Down 
down low, 2-0. Second game of today's doubleheader. Hawks won the opener 13 to nothing. They lead this one 7 to 3 as they go for the sweep. There's a ball down low and it's 3 and 0. The opener keyed by an eight run first inning that had one hit and a whole bunch of face on balls. This one much different. In the pitch, that's in there for a strike. It's 3 and 1 on McAndrew. Stu Boyer and Tom Prince bringing you the action here on Buffalo Sports Page. Russ Pataglia, our photographer. Here's the pitch. High fly ball foul and out of play. And the count goes full. The pitch. High and tight, ball four, he walked him. Second time McAndrews has been on base with a base on balls. And that'll bring up the left fielder, Billy Lavello, who got a base hit in the second. And we're gonna get- Right fielder. The, the right fielder, excuse <laughs> me. Yeah, that's right. I forgot he switched. <laughs> and he's a left-handed hitter though. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> got a base hit. That was left something, we knew it, right? Yeah. <laughs> yes, throw over to first. He's back safely. So LaBello got a base hit and was safe on an error and scored. Takes a pitch outside and was retired by the third baseman. So he's one for three on the day. Played left field and right field in this game so far. The pitch. Outside or on the outside corner for a strike. The pitch, in there for a strike. One and two on Billy Lobello. Ball, two and two now. Bouncing ball towards second, gloved by the second baseman. A second for one, there's no throw to first. So Lobello bounces out the second baseman to the shortstop and there are two away. And it's a force play as, as uh, McAndrews is wiped out on the force play. And it'll bring us back to the top of the order. This at the top of the order is Benjamin Ritezak. The pitch. That's a strike. And Ritezak. Orchard Park boy. I was going to say, he's from Orchard. Dad, did you coach him? No. No. Okay. He did play with my son, though. He did play with Luke. The pitch. Bouncing ball toward the second baseman. Gloves, throws to second, and the inning is over as Ritezek bounces out. So no runs, no hits, no errors, and one man left on base after seven complete. It is Hilbert seven, Wells three. Hilbert College Baseball is being brought to you by the Big Tree Inn, and you are watching Buffalo Sports Page.
top half of the eighth inning, Hilbert leads this one seven to three. We have Brendan Walsh on the pitch for the Hawks. And the first batter he's scheduled to face is Zach Young, and that's who it is. So Walsh, the righty, pitches to Young, the righty. Pitches just off the outside corner for a ball, 1-0. and Brendan so far on this season, 4.60 ERA. He's 0-1. He's had 10 appearances with 15.2 innings pitch with 11 strikeouts. And Young fouls that one out of play. So the count goes to 1-1. One and one. Young, right-handed batter. The pitch. Low one outside, two and one. So when you were coaching, did you have nicknames for all your players? I Not all of them, no. Did you have a favorite nickname? No. Okay. I was just curious. Is they're calling him Big Cat? Yeah, no. I mean, I mean, of course. They, I mean, a lot of them come to you with nicknames, right, too, right? right? Yes. The pitch. Ball two, two and two. Two, two pitch. Down. Well, that's actually ball four. Off by one, and Young draws a walk to start the top of the eighth. Again, the first batter faces a new pitcher, draws a walk. And that's We've seen that a number of times today, and now it's Lance Phillips is the batter. Uh, maybe that's not Phillips. Did I... Here's the pitch. High and tight for a ball, 1-0. and oh. That's actually 16, and that is Mark Maybe out of Lansing, New York. So Maybe hitting. He takes a strike, and the count evens up at 1-1. One and one. The pitch, line foul down the right side. Count goes to one and two. And Morse, he's actually a De local uh, player. He's a DePew resident. Also played for the St. Mary's of uh, Lancaster, which we talked about a few times today. The pitch, bouncing ball foul down the first side. It's got a really great off-speed pitch. It's got a ton of movement to it. We actually watched it during warm-ups and we're very impressed at how much movement his ball has. The pitch. Breaking ball stays up high. The pitch. High, and Walsh is in danger of walking the first two batters he's faced. Yeah, this is a big at bat, and we do see the Hilbert bullpen warming up too. Like, we're getting late in the game. It's not where you can let somebody go real far at this point. Bouncing ball towards short. Santos picks it up, drops it, steps on the bag, and does get the out. So a big break there. Santos bobbled it. Picked it up. He wanted to turn too quickly and briefly probably took his eye off the ball. And this is James Camacho out of Huntington, New York. Batting for Bradley Mills. The pitch. Outside, ball one, one and oh. pitch foul one and one maybe the windiest that it's been all day right now yes. obviously that's starting to happen as we settle into the evening hours yes. which is a big reason why they did start early today to try to get these games in 
The pitch off the outside corner for a ball. But the beauty here is they do have lights here in Gowanda, so it was it, it's not like a game can't be played later here. I just noticed that. <laughs> We've been here all day, and I just now noticed that they have lights when you said that. Well, that's cool. They can play games under the lights. Foul off to the right side. Night games are awesome. Oh, absolutely. They're a lot of fun. The only problem is this early in the season, they're very cold. <laughs> yes. Yes. Right. And it's not not only for people like us, but it's just cold in general, even for the players to be out there. And that bench player that needs to come off and be that big player for you within a game, those are very tough to handle. Maybe he gets his lead from first. There's the pitch to Camacho. Ooh, that one just missed. And the count goes to three and one. And his body language is telling you he wanted that one. ball down the line and one of the Wells players is sprinting out there to get it. Here's the pitch. Foul right in the same direction and hopefully he didn't get hit. He'll get some applause for his teammates for hustling out there and retrieving the ball. Full count now on Camacho. The pitch. Liner foul down the right side. He's doing a good job of staying alive and forcing the pitcher to throw more pitches. <laughs> Brendan Walsh out of the stretch. And the 3-2 pitch outside, ball four. And Wells has two on with one out. Both on bases on balls. And the batter now is the left fielder, Chris McLean. And we're gonna are we getting a pitching change here? There he's gonna talk to him. Whether he actually does a pitching change, we'll see. But like I said, is they've been warming up and I think they're I think he's gonna talk to him a little bit. Give him a little more time to warm up. E either that or he sees something out there that he wants to talk to his pitcher about. First and second, one away. It's a seven to three game. Hilbert would love to turn another double play here if they could. And so far, I haven't seen any signal that they're making any kind of change. No, I think he's trying to just talk to his pitcher and catcher right now, make sure they're getting on the same page. And you can see they're looking for uh, Blue to come out and say something. <laughs> That's what so, uh, there, it is absolutely a, uh, you know, we're going to use as much time to get my bullpen ready. Yeah. And, I think it's just and the thought to... process could be is that this is going to be the last batter then is what the thought process is. Or you're going to go in out, uh, in out at a time right here. So, Brendan Walsh in a jam. Plain. The batter. The pitch. Swing and a miss. Strike one. Nothing in one. All I know is we've been here since 1130, and those <laughs> big tree wings are sounding pretty good right about now. <laughs> Can't argue with that. And the sun has, seems to have gone down just a little bit as it's gotten a couple of degrees colder. Here's the pitch. Off the outside corner for a ball, 1-0. Okay. and oh. oh, the ball gets away from Welsh, but no one will move up. This is a big at-bat, because no matter what, if there's another runner, another batter that gets on base here, now you're bringing the tying batter up to the plate. And like you said, wind's blowing out. Things are happening. Like, it's not a position you want to put yourself in if you're Helper. The pitch high for a ball, two and one. McLean bounced out to third, struck out swinging and got hit by a pitch. Then moved to second on a pass ball after that, but did not score. And the bullpen stopped, so you wonder if their person's ready to go at this point. Swing and a miss. Strike two, two and two. Top of the order, Max Odom on deck.
The pitch. High fly ball. Second baseman going back. Makes a nice catch. And there are two away. That's uh, Benjamin Ritajak making that catch right there. And then that, don't underestimate that. Two away now, big out there, and back to the top of the order. And it's Max Odom. Remember what we said, we expect it out by out right now. Yeah. So guess what, you got your out, you get another at bat then. And Max Odom walked in the first, hit by a pitch in the third. And there's a strike, nothing in one. Walked in the fourth and flew out to the right fielder in the sixth. Runners lead from first and second. Two down, top of the eighth. Hilbert up seven to three. The pitch off the outside corner for a ball and the count evens up at one and one. And McAndrews calls time and wants to have a word with Walsh. Hilbert won the opener, 13 to nothing. They had an eight run first inning and they had one hit in the inning. The rest was all bases on balls mostly. And um, Hilbert scored twice in the first inning here. Wells came back with three, but then Hilbert bounced back with a five run inning. And that's where we've been ever since the fourth inning. Walsh takes a long look at McAndrew. And he's set to pitch to Odom. And he reaches out and the caught by the shortstop. Nice play by Santos. I thought that might drop in, it did not. And the inning is over. No runs, no hits, couple of walks and a couple of men left on base after seven and a half. Hilbert seven, Wells three. Hilbert College Baseball is brought to you by the Big Tree Inn. And you're watching Hilbert College Baseball on Buffalo Sports Page. Bottom half of the eighth inning, Hilbert leading by a score of seven to three. Patrick Whalen will lead it off for the Hawks. Called out on strikes in the first, flew out to center field in the second, got a base hit in the third, and was retired by the first baseman in the sixth. Big left-handed batter facing now Cameron Heyman on the pitch. The pitch, down low, ball one, one and oh. The pitch. Outside, ball two, two and oh. 
This has been the you know the dangerous part of the lineup. These top four batters today for Hilbert. The pitch down low, ball three. What do you think is harder, to hit a baseball or to throw strikes? Ooh. <laughs> Pretty good question, right? And he crushes one to center field straight away, way back, and gone. A home run for Patrick Whalen, and it's 8-3. to three. No doubt about that one. Whalen crushed it. And it's 8-3, to three, Hawks. Yeah, he really got a hold of that one. Wow. <laughs> yeah. What does that sign say out there? Does that say 350? 350. Well, that was well mm -hmm. over 350. His teammates giving him the business now. Jack Duffick is the batter. The pitch on the outside corner for a strike. Nothing in one. Little extra breathing room for the Hawks. You never know how big that can be. Here's the pitch. Down low for a ball. One and one. Duffick got a hit and scored in the first, walked and scored in the third, and was called down on strikes. The pitch. And takes a strike on the outside corner. It's one and one. The pitch. Breaking ball stays inside, two and one. Stu Boyer and Tom Prince, we hope you enjoyed today's Hilbert Hawks baseball. Russ Pataglia, our photographer. It's been a sun-drenched day here in Gowanda. And there's a drive deep to left field, way back. And it'll stay in the ballpark, and Duffick is into second base with a double. He crushed that one, too. It was back-to-back -back right there. Uh, I thought for a moment it was going to be I did, bad. too. It came off the bat real nice, but just landed short as it one-hopped the fence out there. And McLean made a nice play, and it's a double for Duffick. Two very hard-hit balls of Cam Heyman here. And now it's Jairo Santos, who had a big three-hit game in the first game and takes a strike in this, this game. He had a sacrifice fly and a run batted in and flew out to left. Bounced out to the second baseman, then walked and moved up on a wild pitch. So Santos has had a good day. He's had a good day both games and a really good day at shortstop defensively. The pitch. And it's low and in the dirt for a ball. One and one. It's almost those insurance runs that we talk about right here, right? That's what uh, Hilbert's doing is they try to go to that ninth inning to try to close this one out and sweep the doubleheader. The pitch in there for a strike on the inside corner. One and two. Nice curveball. You saw, you actually saw Santos turn on that one. Thought it was going to hit him, but a great break where it went back into the zone. The pitch. Nice stop by Bradley Mills. Ball two, two and two. The question for Hilbert will be is who's going to close this, right? I, I was just going to ask you. Are we going to see someone else or do we see Morse come back out? The pitch up high for a ball. And we'll see if Walsh comes back. First, the order of business now is Hilbert seeing if they can add some more runs. They've got one so far in the eighth. High pop up, foul, and out of play. You know, how big to me now does Mort's performance come where he went into the sixth inning, right, in that first game? So how important is that performance right now when you look at a pitching staff and how many pitchers we've seen come in this game, how big is that performance now for him and Hilbert? Huge. And that pitch is a ball four, and it's first and second with nobody out. Santos draws the base on balls, and the batter now is Nolan Evans. And Evans was safe on an error. Got a base hit and scored, called out on strikes, got another base hit. So first and second, nobody out in a run in here in the bottom of the eighth. The pitch, swing and a miss, strike one, nothing and one, had a good rip at that high fastball. Hilbert was 11 and eight coming into this game, 0 and 2 in conference. 
So think about this, right? 13 and 8 is where this could put you if they can hold on for the win right here. And in conference right now, that changes things. And a curveball has popped up into center field. Zach Odom puts it away, and there's one away. And it should bring up Dustin Hendricks. Nope, that's not. This is Connor Houck. Houck went into the ball game to play left field when LaBello switched from left to right. I imagine Hendricks was taken out. So this is the first at bat of this game of Connor Houck out of Lancaster High School right here in Western New York. He takes a pitch that's in there for a strike, nothing in one. The pitch to Houck, the ball. Runners lead from first and second. One away, bottom of the eighth. Eight to three, Hilbert. Hawks in a great position to be able to sweep the double header. There's a ball. Two and oh. Excuse me, two and one. The pitch. Up high, three and one. Looks like the bullpen is still going over there for Wells. The pitch. Swing and a miss. And a good cut at that three and one fastball. So now the count is full. And down low, ball four, and the bases are loaded for the Hawks, and we're going to get a visit to the mound. And it should bring up the third baseman, Alex Ellison, while we have this conference on the mound. Hilbert eight to three in the bottom of the eighth. Bases loaded, one out, one run in on the home run by Patrick Whalen, who crushed it to straightaway center field. This, does, this is Alex Ellison, number 21. And Alex struck out swinging, called out on strikes, walked, stole a base, and bounced out the pitcher to the first baseman. He's in a chance to really break this one wide open here if he can get a hit. And he lines one into left field past the diving shortstop. And two runs will score. And it'll make it a 10 to 3 game. Big hit there by Alex Ellison. And the Hawks now lead by seven. That's what, you know, we talk about this, right? The walks, how what they're going to do to you. Those walks will kill you, and they will come back on you, and there you go. That's exactly what happens right there, and a great job of Ellison to be able to put the ball into play and find it in a hole right there. 10-3. to three. Griff McAndrews, the batter, the catcher. Here's the pitch. Breaking ball in there for a strike, and it's nothing in one. Here's the pitch. Breaking ball in there for a strike. Did I get the score wrong, Tom? They, no, I have 10-3. Okay. It was 8-3 going in and two runs scored. That's it was bases loaded, so. That's what I thought. They didn't put the second run up on the scoreboard. I thought, I am losing my mind. <laughs> Here's the pitch. Ooh, high and tight for a ball. Ah, now they corrected it. I feel better. <laughs> One and two on Griff McAndrews. The pitch. Line right back past the pitcher into center field for a base hit. And here comes run number 11. And it's 11 to three as Connor Houck scores on an RBI base hit by Griff McAndrews. And the Hawks still have runners at first and second. 24 runs scored in this doubleheader. Nice. 24 run runs gave up three and as of right now. Billy Labello, the batter. Now the Hawks have done exactly what you'd like to see them do. If you've got a seven to three lead, they've scored four in the eighth to make that hill that 
Wells has to climb from a hill into a mountain. I have them having more hits this game than they did last game, too. I think they did. Yeah. I'm sure they did. I, I, I made like, like four. <laughs> I, I think they only had about six hits the first game. Yeah, they didn't have to hit much. They kept walking right. so many hitters. Labello, the batter, got two hits on the day. Excuse me, one hit. He was safe on an error. That's outside. Still only one away here in the inning. Top of the order is next. The pitch. Bouncing ball right back to the pitcher. Gloves it, throws to first. And he pulled him off the bag, did he? Safe at first. And the bases are loaded. Oh, my. You know, when things go wrong, they really go wrong. Yeah, that's exactly what happens. You're exactly right. When the wheels fall off, they fall off. So Labello's on at first. Hit it hard right back to the pitcher. And he gets an error on the throw. And now we get Ratajak. 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 Tajak. Benjamin Ratajak out of Orchard Park. In the leadoff spot. Left-handed batter. The pitch. That's a called strike. And you could, but we've only got one out. There's a chance that Whelan and Duffett get up again right here. <laughs> well, I believe Whelan's on deck. Yes, he is. There's a liner rip foul down the first baseline. Turning into a long afternoon for this Wells team and a great afternoon for Hilbert. And, and now, you know, they could bring Walsh easily back out for another inning. He's got a big lead to work with, right? Pitch is high and tight for a ball. Well, I thought that we were going to do that earlier on with Hilton, too, right? right? So we didn't see it. So who knows right. what we're going to see. And, again, you could be wanting to get some guys some work right now with that kind of a lead. Right. Pitch outside for a ball. And it's a 3-2 count on this young man out of Orchard Park. The pitch. Foul out of play. Count holds at three and two. Eleven to three Hawks here in the bottom of the eighth. The pitch. Called strike three. And they're two away. And that will bring up the man who started it all this inning, Patrick Whalen, with a towering home run drive over the fence in center field. And Mr. Whalen was called down on strikes, flew out to left, had a base hit, bounced out to the first baseman, and homered. And he drives one high and deep, way, way back. Gone, a grand slam for Patrick Whalen. He gets two home runs in the inning, and just like that, it's 16 to three. Stand up and applaud for Patrick Whalen. Two no-doubters in the inning. Wow. What more do you say to that than wow, right? That's the perfect word, wow. You just impressed everybody here. Wow is exactly it. Two bombs right here in the sinning right now to really break things wide open. Having a discussion with the why is the base? I, I think they're calling it a game. Oh, oh, okay. Now they might. Can they do that? Yes. That's a great call, Tom. What's going on here? They're calling it a game on a run roll. Well, that was a grand slam that made it 15 to three. And that's it. They're calling that the it. game right there. All right. So Hilbert mm. sweeps the doubleheader, 13 to nothing, and 15 to three. A great day for the Hawks, and Mr. Patrick Whalen put on a show in the eighth inning. So let's wrap it up here and keep your eyes open for Tom's post-game interviews. So for Tom Prince and Russ Battaglia, my name is Stu Boyer. Hilton or, uh, Hilbert sweeps the doubleheader, 13 to nothing, and 15 to three. Thanks most of all to you for watching. This game has been brought to you by the Big Tree Inn, and you've been watching Buffalo Sports Page. My name is Stu Boyer. Have a good night, everybody.